Hey guys, so today we're going to be continuing to talk about energy flow through systems and specifically how to use food webs properly. So remember, food webs are different from food chains in that they're going to show multiple pathways of energy transfer. Food webs represent multiple pathways through which energy and matter flow through a system. So you might have done food webs before in elementary or middle school even, um, but this time I want you to think about not only the flow of um, who's eating whom, but also think about where energy and matter are going as we go up in trophic levels. So here I have a kind of a messy food web drawn. And in our food webs that we'll be making in class, we're going to identify our different individuals within the system using abbreviations or we can label them. So for example, our graph at the bottom here, this will be labeled with a P for producers. And then our primary consumer can be labeled with PC. So we have this organism, whatever it is, a horse or, you know, just regular old herbivore is going to be PC because it's a primary consumer. Now the organism that eats this individual will be a secondary consumer and this is our scary predator right here. And remember eventually all dead organic matter is going to be broken down by our decomposers which I have a little mushroom here is labeled as D. And of course keep in mind that all energy ultimately comes from the sun which is fueling the processes that these uh, uh, producers are going to use to create their uh, organic matter that other organisms can consume. Okay. So when we're creating our food webs, this one down, we want to keep in mind that when we're drawing our arrows, we always want to put them in the direction toward the consumer. So think about it as if the rats are eating the shrubs, the arrow will go towards the rats. Think about the shrubs are going into the rat's stomach, and that's how I remember the direction of the arrows. And there could be multiple pathways, and organisms can be both a primary and a secondary consumer, depending on at which trophic level they are eating. So in this particular food web, I've got all my organisms in my environment. We're going to put the producer sort of towards the bottom, our consumers up, and then we're going to try to put our top predators, our secondary and tertiary consumers, up at the very top. Now it depends on how you arrange this in your particular food web and depends on what ecosystem you have. Um, and again, sometimes organisms can fit into multiple levels, so this won't always be concrete. All right, so the cacti can be eaten by the rats as well, so we'll draw an arrow to there. These insects can eat the shrubs. And lizards can eat the insects as well as the roadrunners, these are a type of bird, and the rats can be consumed by the coyotes. But the coyotes also might eat, for example, the shrubs if they're very, very hungry. Um, and the coyotes can eat the roadrunners. So we notice that these coyotes are not only secondary consumers, but they're also primary consumers as well because they're the first organisms eating the producer right here, but they're also the second organism eating um, this first consumer. All right. So, of course, we want to remember that all dead organic matter is eventually broken down by decomposers and our detritivores, so our bacteria will have a large arrow pointing to it at the very bottom of our food web. Now, remember, we can also rearrange this information into a trophic pyramid. We have another video on this, but keep in mind that producers are going to have the greatest amount of energy in any system, and they'll be at the bottom. Generally, they're also greater in number two, not always, um, but they'll be at the bottom of our trophic pyramid. If we go up a trophic level, we have our primary consumers. These are going to have a little bit less energy. Actually, 90% of energy is lost as heat to the environment every time you go up a trophic level. And then secondary consumers. Again, organisms can sometimes fit into two different trophic levels. Just depends on what they're consuming in that ecosystem. And we could even have tertiary or quaternary consumers depending on how many levels we have in this particular food web. So as you're drawing, keep those things in mind and good luck designing your food webs.